Hi, I'm psychotherapist Mary Jo Rupini with Renovating Relationships, and today's topic is signs of emotional abuse and how to respond. Are you abused? Are you told bad things about yourself? Are you put down? Do you feel insignificant? These are a few of the signs that you live with an emotional abuser. Now, the important thing of emotional abuse is that both men and women emotionally abuse. The thing you must remember is that when guys emotionally abuse, it's usually a prelude to physical abuse. You have to take care of yourself. You have to get to safety, and you have to take care of your children and make sure they're safe. Now, there's a lot of thinking that you can love somebody through abuse. You can't. You can't love them through it. You can't fix it. You can't pray for them through it. You can do all these things, of course, but you have to get out first and maintain your own safety because basically abuse is mental illness. And if this person is abusing you, there is a 90% chance that they were abused. And those tapes are so strong in their head you're not going to be able to change their mind. They're going to need extensive therapy. Now, I understand some of the reasons most women especially stay with an abuser. And by the way, physical and emotional abuse together is 90% done by men to women because there is a control element. So if you're with this abuser, sometimes you rationalize, well, it's not all that bad. I mean, we do have some good times. You really don't. You live with someone mentally ill. Or you may say, I'm embarrassed. I'm a loser. There's nobody that would have me. All of those are things that this abuser told you to make you feel incompetent so that they would stay with you. Their self-esteem is very low, but you would never see them act like that. I'm going to run through some signs of emotional abuse. Rather than putting up a wall or judging them, I just want you to sit back close your eyes and think of them, listen to them. If any of these resonate with you, then I'm going to help you get out. And that's the most important part is getting out because right now you probably feel trapped. Okay, blaming others and you for everything, threatening you that they're going to leave or saying that no one else would ever have you, verbally insulting you with sarcasm or cuss words, temper tantrums when they don't get their own way. They think the only thing you have to do is take care of them, making you feel as though you have no, no other life but serving them, telling you things like you're stupid or you're insignificant. And behind closed doors, they turn into a monster. Many times, emotional abusers appear charming to others. And this is part of the confusion that you may be feeling if you live with one. Now, let's go through the four ways to get out because this is so important for you and your safety. Number one, you need a confidant. This has to be one true friend, at least. It can be a parent. It can be a teacher. It can be a preacher, anyone who will listen to your story, understand, help you find help, but more than that, provide a safe place for you to go to. Very important. That's your step one. Step two, you are going to need counseling because this person has made you feel so bad about yourself. Your self-esteem is so low. There is a part of you that really believes what they said, that no one else will have you, that you'll never have a good life that, like you have now, that you can actually get through this. This is part of your marriage or whatever they say. Remember, they're insecure and they're trying to control you. You need a therapist. Thirdly, you need, most importantly, to understand that when you leave, you're going to want to go back. There's this thing that happens with learned helplessness. Basically, you don't know how to do for yourself. You depend on them. Okay, so to get away from that and stay away from that, it will help you if you tape record some of the arguments, some of the fights, some of the put-downs. You can listen to that tape later to reinforce why you had to leave. Not only that, but if it gets legal, you have evidence, and that's very important. Lastly, you need to leave. You need to have that person. You need to have a plan. 
You need to pack your bag, you need to have the kids ready, and you need to go. No one, no one deserves to be hurt in love. No one deserves to be hurt anyway. But when someone says, I love you, and this is why I do this to you, that's false. That's, that's a myth. People don't, people who love you don't get jealous and pound you. They don't hurl accusations at you. They don't say things that make you feel of like less of a person. You aren't afraid of someone who loves you. You aren't afraid to say no to someone who loves you. Please, if you're having trouble, go ahead and go to my Twitter, hashtag Renovating Relationships. Let me know. Comment, subscribe to my YouTube, come in through my website. I will help you. I promise. You have a friend in me. The main thing is we have to deal with abuse because we it's a way of building healthy families. If we don't accept it, if we try to love through it, we're not promoting a healthy family. We're promoting a very sick and disturbed one. This is Mary Jo Rapini signing off for Renovating Relationships. Let's build a healthy, awesome relationship, not only for you, but for your children, for our schools, for our communities, and for our country. Bye-bye till next week.